Hello again, everyone. Today I am here with an unboxing and swatching of paints from the Stone Ground Paint Company, which is a handmade watercolor paint company in Canada. And this actually has both watercolor and gouache inside. And let's go ahead and get in here so that I can start swatching. So I can't even remember how I was introduced to this particular brand. Um, so it has these little flyers or whatever you want to call them about the company. Nice little note on here. Um, let's see. Our colors are permanent and light fast with a smooth fluid consistency. Top grade gum Arabic locally sourced honey and the world's best pigments combined to create traditionally made paint. Ground in small batches. So whenever I see a new, a new paint company, I, uh, especially for watercolors, I tend to want to get a few to try it out. So this, I've actually already opened this, but I, I left it where it was so that I could unbox it for you. It came with this little spacer here so that those wouldn't clank around. Um, I'm going to leave them in here, but I probably, well, actually before, actually I am going to take these out because they're stuck with like a double-sided tape in here. And I probably, I would probably take them out anyway, but I wouldn't be able to see the names on the sides of the pans if I don't take them out, at least for the ones in the back row. So, boy, that's a strong double-sided tape, whatever that is that they're using. Um, so actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this first row and then I'll be able to see the second row's names. So there we go. And this whole row is row is gouache, and then this whole row is watercolor. So you'll get um, you'll get both types as as examples here. All right. So what I'm going to be swatching on today is this. Uh, oh, I've forgotten which which sketchbook this is, but it's a Jackson's brand a watercolor sketchbook, but the paper is pretty thin, but I found that it actually works pretty well overall. Um, I already did, um, I did one other swatching on the channel in here and the others have just been kind of like paint play <laughs> with different colors or I'm trying to figure out the order and which colors should go in a palette or is that, that kind of thing. And my plan for those kinds of pages are to um, do like mixed media spreads over them because I don't want to waste the paper, but I figure I, I want to not worry about how much paper I'm using for, for that kind of thing, but I can always use it later. So let's put the paints over here. I have some water off to the side. Um, it's the water I had at my desk, which is a little bit dirty, but I think we'll be okay. The brush that I'm going to be using today is this Da Vinci Zero Cassanio Mop. And um, I have a lot of this particular style brush where it's this traditional mop brush with the, um, I don't even know what these are called, but like basically the little wires around them. I tend to prefer those over the ones with a metal ferrule. And I, I think I've mentioned before on the channel, I'm not even sure why. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's because this area here is a little more broad, like the base of it is a little more broad than um, with a traditional ferrule. At least I feel like that's the case, but... I also just like the way they feel in the hand and maybe that's all it is. So I'm going to wet my brush and I am going to put a little dollop of water. These already look like they're pretty creamy right off the bat. So hopefully that will turn out to be true. Okay, so a little dollop of water on each. I'm gonna start with the gouache. So basically the main difference between gouache and watercolor is that gouache is opaque. So, um, but if you water gouache down, it can essentially be used like watercolor. So this particular color here is called Antique Rose. So you see it's it looks pretty opaque, but as it goes and is watered down, and I, whoa, this is, just keeps going. All right, well, let's just keep going with it. Wow. Um, and that's a lovely color. I really like that. Let me actually get in here a little closer so that you can see that a little better. All 
All right, I'm gonna leave that the way it is, but if you wanted it to be like all opaque, you could either do another layer over that or, uh, you know, you could, oops, sorry, that's my, oh, I don't have a paper towel. I do have a tiny little bit of stuff here to wipe that up with. Um, or you could keep working at the pan to get more pigment off to make it more opaque. Generally, gouaches come in tubes. So I did think it was a little interesting as well that they offered them in pans, I think, exclu exclusively, I think. Okay, so the next color I have here is Apple Blossom. And again, like all the ones, all, all four of them in this row are gouache. So let's try that. This doesn't seem to have as much. Maybe I didn't... Um, you uh, run it through the pan as much either. Okay, so that's Apple Blossom, another beautiful color. This antique rose is just lovely. I love looking at it. Okay, this next one is Starry Night. And, oh wow, that's a really pretty color. I would probably use these more like watercolor, to be honest with you. Um, gouache can also have uh, white pigment in it added to make it more opaque. Um, every brand has their own recipe and I have no idea what this recipe is, but uh, they're definitely really saturated and really beautiful. Okay, this next one is sage green. I'm going to do smaller swatches on the watercolor. These just seem to have quite a bit of pigment and I kind of wanted to see how far they could go. All right, so I'm gonna do the next four down here. And these are all watercolors. The first one I have is Cerulean Blue, which has become one of my favorite blue colors. I'll just do a circle here. Oh wow, look at that. That's lovely. Um, Cerulean tends to not be like a super high, um, tinting strength color, but it does usually have beautiful um, granulation. You're getting a little bit of glare now while it's super wet, but I will show it to you closer up to the camera as we go. This next one is Mayan Green Deep, which I don't think I'd ever really heard, ooh, that's a lovely one, of Mayan Green. Pretty sure this one's granulating as well. That's lovely. Then we have Florentine Green. It looks like those two colors are blending a little bit. <laughs> so you may be actually be getting a little bit of the other. Oh, that one's lovely too. And pretty opaque, even though this one is a watercolor. Um, given how opaque that is, let me actually let me do a little bit of a watered down sample on the top. And then the last one is Tyrian Cobalt Purple, which I don't think I had heard of. Oh wow, that's also very beautiful. Very beautiful. I was pretty particular about which colors I chose, um, but they all seemed beautiful when I looked at their website. And it's, it's like not even coming off as beautiful as it is in person. I'm gonna put these up to the camera so that you can see them. And so the circles on the bottom are the watercolor, which are beautiful. It seems like this has a pretty big value range, so you could probably get quite a few darks and lights out of that. And uh, this Tyrian purple is beautiful. Yeah, lovely. And of course, Cerulean Blue, always a hit with me. And then up here we had the Sage Green, Starry Night, Apple Blossom, oh, Apple Blossom, Antique Rose, and those are all the gouaches up here. Really, really nice. Um, actually, what I'll do is I will go ahead and label these because I did have a new pen discovery that I wanted to show to you. And it is this one, it is the Uniball Eye Micro. So I have been trying to find sort of the perfect combination waterproof pen 
<laughs> that writes really well and is waterproof, obviously, and has a really nice dark line. And this, which is a roller ball, I think that's what it's called, um, is waterproof. It says here, waterproof, fade proof. I've noticed that if you smudge it right after it's uh, written with, it, it does smudge, so there is a little bit of drying time, but it is such a pleasure to write with. It's just, it flows so beautifully that I wanted to share that one with you. Um, I tried the Uniball Air Micro and it is not, um, first off, it seems to me more of a felt tip than um, a roller ball like this one. And I'm pretty sure that ink is not permanent because I have not been able to watercolor over it and have it be permanent. So let's go ahead and label this here. So we've got Antique Rose. And as a really beautiful, actually, let me put that down, Antique Rose, has a really beautiful dark line. This is Apple Blossom. Starry Night. and sage green. And then down here we have cerulean. This is Mayan green deep. Sorry about that, I was out of the frame. Florentine green. And Tyrian Cobalt Purple. And so these are watercolor. And then these are gouache. And then they, oops. Yeah, so, um, I would, I would try to keep what you're writing on dry and um, let this dry a little bit before you put something over it. Uh, and then this company name is Stone Ground Paint Company. Ugh, some terrible writing. Paint Company from Canada. And the one thing that I did want to let you know is these did take a while to ship to me. Uh, they spent a long time in transit. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it wasn't all that fast. I mean, Canada's not too far away, but it did take a little while, but uh, definitely worth it. These are beautiful, beautiful colors. Just based on these examples, I would highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say, I guess. Oh, and one thing that I wanted to do before we go, I'm gonna um, so I'm gonna take some more of this antique rose, but do it fairly watered down, and then I'm gonna go over that. So that did not smudge at all. So I let that dry for just a minute or two, and this pen is watercolor waterproof. And like I said, it's a really nice dark line. Did I, if I didn't have to manipulate my hand around all these little wet puddles here on the page, I, I would have been able to write a little better with it. But as you can see, it is a very nice dark line. So this is one that's probably gonna be in my arsenal along with the ever-present uh, felt tip Sharpie pen. So this is one that's kind of a staple for me whenever I want a waterproof pen. This is the one I use the most, but this is definitely going to join it, I think, in my most used pen. So I'm always excited when I find a very um, useful pen. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much, bye.